Welcome back. In the last video we looked at, um, we kind of introduced you a little bit to arterial blood gases and we looked at the sort of acid base component of that arterial blood gas um, from our systematic approach. And we said that that systematic approach needs to be needs to be considered with clinical context and the sort of three parts of that for the systematic side is we look at the acid base status, we look at the basic primary disturbance and we look at compensation where there's any compensation for that primary disturbance. And then I introduced you to this ABC method um, given in Mali um, for interpreting arterial blood gases. So in this video we're going to look at B, we're going to look at that basic primary disturbance. So let's get going here. So we're going to be looking at basic primary disturbance. Basic primary disturbance. Okay, so what this says is uh, once we have identified from our A part of the ABC that there is an acid base disturbance, we, we know that the, the blood is either normal or it is too acidic or it is too alkalotic. So we've identified that the pH is either normal or out of range. Now if it's out of range, um, what is, and sometimes even when it's normal, what, what is that base, what is causing that? What's the primary cause of that change in pH? What is the primary cause of the acid base disturbance? And it turns out that there is, there's two sort of categories of what, of what that can be. The first one is it can be a respiratory cause. So let's put that in, respiratory. We'll put some kind of emphasis around this. It can either be a respiratory cause and, and or, what we can do this here, we'll say and slash or. It can be a metabolic cause. So what we're going to put here is metabolic cause. So we'll put a little bit of a squiggle around that. So in terms of the primary disturbance, the primary reason for the acid-base disturbance, we have respiratory causes and we have metabolic, metabolic causes. Um, when we get to metabolic, I'll explain a little bit about how metabolic perhaps isn't the best word, but it, it, it's the word we, is, that is generally accepted. Um, but let's start off with our respiratory. So the, the, the sort of, as we've already discussed in previous videos, every sort of cellular process that happens, every metabolic process that happens and happens using an aerobic um, mechanism of breaking down glucose, um, creates CO2, it creates carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide is the byproduct of that metabolism. And carbon dioxide then dissolves into the blood, um, and when it dissolves into the blood, it forms carbonic acid. Okay, so we have carbonic acid in the blood. Carbonic acid. So even though we usually think perhaps of the kidneys as being, as being the major sort of major organ in terms of clearance of acid and and maintenance of, of pH that, that really isn't the case that the, the the lungs and the respiratory system are the major organ of acid excretion and are the major organ of that sort of moment to moment regulation of pH and the goal of the, of the respiratory system with respect to pH maintenance is to clear carbonic acid so we're looking at carbonic acid clearance Okay, so what we'd ideally want to do is measure how much carbonic acid there is in the blood, and and then we would have an idea of whether or not we're doing a good job in terms of in terms of clearing that clearing that um, that acid. Unfortunately, carbonic acid levels are, are very very low in the blood, and it's not really feasible to measure that when we when we draw blood work. But luckily. Um, it turns out that carbon dioxide has a direct linear relationship with carbonic acid. So, and when I say carbon dioxide, I'm referring to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, the PaCO2, the partial pressure in the arterial blood, has a direct relationship, direct linear relationship, relationship with carbonic acid carbonic acid. Okay, so by measuring the PCO2, this PACO2, we can really 
uh, have an indication of how well the lungs are clearing acid from the body. And given that, once the blood goes through the pulmonary the pulmonary vasculature, it meets the alveolar capillary membrane. When it's then pumped out of the left side of the heart, we, we, and in the, that's arterial blood, it should pretty much be in homeostasis. We should be clearing the same amount of acid that we produce. That's how we maintain homeostasis, and that's how we sort of keep up with our metabolism. So measuring arterial blood is very, very useful because it's pretty much homogeneous throughout the body. So if you take blood from an artery, in the, in the arm, it's going to be very, very similar in chemistry to the blood that you take from an artery in the leg. So measuring the PCO2, is a, considering its direct, direct linear relationship with carbonic acid, is, is a very good way of measuring how well we're doing it in this, in this process of clearing acid. So our goal is to excrete carbonic acid. However, we can't, we can't really do, uh, measure carbonic acid in the blood. So we, we look at the CO2 because of its relationship with carbonic acid. Okay, so, and we should know, or at least if you don't, then this is going to be a, a mind-blowing moment for you, that as we Im increase the ventilation through the lungs, as we increase minute ventilation, we increase the clearance of CO2 and therefore the clearance of acid. So ventilation of the lungs, ventilation of lung, lungs, clears carbonic acid okay so that's this is a very 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 important relationship and I imagine you've probably come across it by now but if you haven't then I'm glad that I've had the privilege of introducing it to you um, ventilating the lungs is how we clear carbonic acid if you increase the ventilation of the lungs we increase CO2 clearance and therefore increase acid clearance. If we decrease the ventilation of the lungs, we decrease the CO2 clearance so it starts to accumulate and therefore we accumulate acid. And that's going to become very, very important when we start looking at the primary causes of and interpreting acid um, ABGs. We'll start to look at ventilation as, as a major as a major factor in, in, in how um, ABGs look and how we treat them. So the indices that we, I say we use is the PCO2. So there is a normal range for that, which I'll give you here. The PCO2, PACO2, I should say, well, I'll typically refer to it as just PCO2. The normal range for that is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. Okay, again, that normal range may differ where you are in your, in, institution or wherever you're watching this but this is typically a, a very well accepted uh, normal range um, so so yes yeah, so this is what I'll be using for the videos so we have the respiratory that can be the major cause of um, an acid-base disturbance and there's also metabolic so we'll look at metabolic quickly here really Mali um, says in in his text that metabolic should really be called should be called non-respiratory non-respiratory as a cause because really a, a metabolic primary disturbance is is kind of a diagnosis of exclusion what it's basically saying is that the cause isn't respiratory so as a result it ends up being termed metabolic okay the, what we use um, from the metabolic portion is typically the bicarbonate ion concentration HCO3 is bicarbonate, um, and we typically use the, the bicarbonate concentration. Sometimes we can use, um, uh, we'll put an and or, sometimes we'll use what's called the base excess. Um, I'm not going to get too much into that in this video. We're mainly going to focus in these videos on the bicarbonate concentration. Okay? So the issue with metabolic interpretation is that. PCO2 is an extremely good measure of the respiratory function and its ability to clear acid from, from the blood. There isn't as good um, an indice from the metabolic side. There isn't one index that is as good as the PCO2 on the other side. So it's a little bit more challenging to interpret, to interpret um, metabolic primary disturbances, but typically what we use is, is this bicarbonate ion concentration. So the normal range for bicarbonate ions is, the one I'll be using anyway, is we typically say 24 plus or minus uh, 2. 
and the unit for that is milliequivalents milliequivalents per liter. I think you can also use millimoles per liter because bicarbonate is a univalent iron, so milliequivalents and millimoles should be the same. Um, so given that 24 plus or minus 2, we say that 22 to 26 milliequivalents per liter. That's the bicarbonate concentration that we that we tip that we look at for um, for metabolic disturbances. Now the relationship with bicarbonate and acid base is that bicarbonate is a is a basic iron. Um, so as you increase your concentration of bicarbonate, increase bicarbonate leads to an increase in pH. Okay, it makes the blood more alkaline. So greater than 26 for our normal value here, we typically term alkalosis and less than 22 we're going to be terming acidosis. Now this isn't always the case. There are times when the metabolic indices will vary and it won't have anything to do with the acid base disturbance but for the sake of these videos and for the sake of strict classification for for those who are sort of first learning this, we're going to say that if the, the bicarb is greater than 26, we have an alkalosis of metabolic origin. And if it's less than 22, we have an acidosis of metabolic origin. Okay, and we remember the relationship we had over here with the PCO2. I should just write that out just to be consistent. Uh, increasing PCO2. Remember that we said that because carbon dioxide dissolves into the blood as carbonic acid, if you increase the amount of PCO2, you decrease your pH, right? You make the blood more acidic and therefore decreased PCO2 is going to equal a more alkaline pH. So we say less than 35 for our CO2 is going to it, we're going to equate to an alkalosis, alkalosis, and if the PCO2 is greater than 45, we're going to call that an acidosis. Okay, so we've started to have a look at what that primary disturbance is. Once we've identified from our A part of the ABC that there is an acid-base disturbance, the pH is off in some way, we then need to figure out what's causing that change. Now that can either be a respiratory cause, which is going to relate to the PCO2, it's going to relate to our CO2 levels, increasing CO2 causes a decrease in pH, and a decrease in CO2 causes an increase in pH, and that's going to cause our alkalosis or acidosis. So it can either be the CO2's fault, or it can be a non-respiratory cause, um, which is termed metabolic in the way we sort of colloquially talk about blood gas interpretation in medicine. Um, and th that typically relates to the bicarb, but we can also use base excess, which we might touch on later. If the bicarbonate level is greater than 26, we have our normal range here. We term that an alkalosis because increasing bicarbonate, which is a basic ion, um, causes the pH to go up. And if it's less than 22, there is less base, meaning there's a net acidosis. 